So I did that. And uh, one of the less interesting things about me is I used to be a naval intelligence officer for 12 years. And I will tell you that it is 143 times less interesting than it seems like on TV. Although I just saw this morning one of my friends got to be on CNN. One of my Navy buddies was on CNN, which was kind of cool. He's a retired captain now, and he was on CNN. That was kind of cool. Um, I am currently the software, a software development manager at Gateway Ticketing Systems. That's out in Gilbertsville. Uh, we are hiring front-end developers. Interestingly enough, we don't use Angular. We use React, but, you know, hey, that's all right. Um, uh, we are always looking for smart, capable people. So if you're uh, looking for work, please uh, don't hesitate to stop by. Um, I was a long time Delphi developer. Anybody in here ever heard of Delphi? How many of you that have heard of it have used it? Ray, you should be raising your hand. You too, Ryan. Come on. So uh, I was actually the Delphi product manager for uh, a number of years back in the uh, zero zeros or the first decade. What do we call the first decade? The aughts? I was back in the aughts. I was the Delphi product manager. Um, so here's a, further establishing my bona fides. I've written three Delphi books. Um, they are uh, for sale at codingindelphi.com if you're interested in buying them. Uh, they uh, still sell to this day, so Delphi is still out there being used. Uh, we are a big Delphi shop at Gateway Ticket. As a matter of fact, I think we are maybe the biggest Gateshead Delphi shop in the entire country. We have over 22, 23 Delphi developers, I think, something like that. Uh, let's see. Also, I have got extensive conference experience, so conference speaking experience, so that makes you feel better. I have done this before. I've given this talk before. This is the second time at CoCamp I've given this talk. I appreciate you all coming. Uh, it filled up again, so that's really good. Um, and uh, I am a self-taught Angular developer. About two years ago, I decided, hey, you know, I need to learn how to build web applications. So I started teaching myself Angular. And uh, here we are. Ready. OK, so here's the prerequisites. This is the only real prerequisite for the class. You kind of have to know that Angular is some kind of well, uh, web development framework. Anybody know more than that about Angular? OK, you guys have to leave. No, I'm, that, that, I'm just kidding. So actually, for, in terms of real sort of real prerequisites, how many people have Git installed on their machine? Or I should ask, how many, actually, how many don't? Did you guys get an email from me, by the way? OK. I sent one through Meetup. And I think some of you didn't get one, but OK. You should have Git installed, because the repositories that we're pulling are going to be on Git. So if you need to download Git, um, that's good. You can do that. Um, you also need Visual Studio Code or some code editor of some sort. Uh, Visual Studio will work. I'm going to work in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to assume you are, unless, you know, uh, well, I shouldn't say I assume you are. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. I'm going to be talking about Visual Studio Code and how it is an excellent Angular uh, tool, all that good stuff. And if you want to download it and get it, uh, by all means, you can do that at code.visualstudio.com slash download. And the final thing is <clears throat> you'll need Node, including NPM, Node Package Manager. Um, so because we're going to be installing a few things using Node Package Manager. Is that going to be a major problem for anybody in the next five minutes, ten minutes? Nobody? Did everybody, can everybody read this? I should have written it bigger, I guess. This is how to hook up to the Wi-Fi, by the way. Look for MSFT guest. Go, uh, select event attendee code and type in this entire thing right here. That's a two, that's a seven. <clears throat> oh, this is not good. My voice is already getting a little sore. We got a little bit of talking to do today, too. All right, so here's some logistic items. We're going to start. We started around 8.30, hopefully. We should be done by 4 o'clock. Um, with these things, you never know. Maybe I'll have to rush to get to 4 o'clock. Maybe we'll go a little beyond. Maybe I'll be rushing to finish at 4 o'clock. I don't know. Last time I finished right at about 4 o'clock, and it worked out great. That's uh, 1,600 is 4 p.m. for you non-military types, by the way. Um, we'll take one break in the morning and one in the afternoon, not on in the afternoon. 
Um, lunch is at 11.30 to 12.30, so we're the first, we're first lunch. Um, yeah, that's good. And then um, uh, the restrooms are completely down at the other side of the building by the uh, uh, elevators down there at the other end. So uh, if you need to go before the break, you know, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you get up and go to the bathroom. If you need to stand up and whatever, that's fine. Nobody, you know, we're all friends here. We're all working together, so it should be good. Um, and then final note is please help me to remember to turn off my mic at the break so that I'm not broadcasting my bathroom visits to all of you fine people here. Um, here's our basic basic rundown on the agenda. We'll talk first about history and some information about just talking about Angular, a little bit about where it came from, how it uh, works, and all that stuff. Talk a little bit about TypeScript. Uh, Angular is written in TypeScript. Um, TypeScript is kind of interesting. Uh, we'll get everything installed and started up. <clears throat> of course, you're late, Alessandro. You're going to have to sit in one of the chairs. Then we'll do a rundown on the basic application with CLI, with the command line interface. We'll go through every, you know, every important file. Um, <clears throat> I'm having trouble in my voice. This is not good. Anybody got a lozenger I can have? Anyone? Anyone? Mueller? That would really help. I'm struggling here. Nice. Thank you. It's a Ricola. Excellent. That's very, very kind of you. Thank you. Okay. Um, after that, we'll spend the bulk of our time building a, a to do application. It's not really a front end web development application or demonstration or presentation unless you build a to do application. Did you know that? You have to build a to do application. So we will build a full feature to-do application. By the end of the day, you will be able to keep track of your to-dos. There she is. Hey, uh, on uh, on the web. So uh, then we'll just draw some conclusions and be on our way to the beer part. So uh, let's talk a little bit about history of Angular. Is this in a way for people? Is this kind of awkward? It seems kind of awkward. okay. Um. Angular first started out as Angular JS. How many people have heard of Angular JS, right? Anybody used it? Do it with it? Pretty much everything you know about Angular JS will be useless to you today. Um, Angular JS started out as a 20% project at Google by a couple of guys named Mishko Hevry and Adam Abrams. Um, if you, for those of you who don't know, the 20% project is basically at Google, you get to spend 20% of your working time doing anything you want. Um, generally, people spend that time building software. Gmail, for instance, was a 20% project that came out of Google. Angular was a 20% project that came out of Google. When the, uh, Angular JS sort of blazed a trail for front-end development, but uh, there were some weaknesses and problems with it, and so they completely rewrote it as Angular 2, and now the current version, I think, is Angular 7.4. They release a new version about every 36 hours or so. I might exaggerate that a little bit. No, they, they release a new version about every six months, really. So now they just call it Angular. I think they try and not put a number on things when they talk about it just because it's moving so quickly. Um, the good thing is they are fanatically, um, they're fanatical, I should say, about backwards compatibility. And uh, uh, so Angular 2 projects should probably compile and work just fine in Angular 7. Um, so they, they, as you move forward, your code migrates forward quite nicely. Current version is 7.0. As I said, they might have released one in the last 15 minutes that I don't know about. I think actually the version is 7.3 or 7.4, but we'll figure that out here in a minute. Um, let's see, so it's backed by Google. In other words, Google invests money and time into developing and pushing forward 
Angular. Um, it's an open source project. Uh, you can go to angular.io. How many people have IO domains? All the cool kids seem to be doing IO now. Am I right about this? All the cool, you know, so, ooh, IO. I don't know why that is, but. Um, and if you want to see some sites that are made with Angular to get a feel for how Angular can work, you can go to madewithangular.com. Google uses a bunch of it, uses it a bunch. Um, um, other people use it, of course, and uh, you'll be using it by the end of the day. Very good. So here's the Angular topics we're going to cover today in the uh, uh, presentation and in our code. We're going to talk a little bit about components and how um, Angular is component-based, which is really nice. Anytime something's component-based, that usually means it's easy to maintain, easy to separate your concerns and do all that kind of stuff. And we're talking about modules. We're talking about data binding, which is very nice. Code inside your TypeScript slash JavaScript code binds into your HTML. And you can have the HTML event model can be connected up and talk to your uh, uh, connect up and talk to your TypeScript code. So it works out pretty well. Gentlemen, if you go find a tall young man outside at the booth there, they should be able to find you a seat so you don't have to sit on stools. That's what they told. What's that? Whatever you're cool with is fine by me. That, that works. Then we'll talk about, uh, well, input and output is kind of part, part of data binding, but we'll talk about how you can have input and output variables that will enable you to uh, put your data where you need to. We'll talk about services and HTTP and how Angular makes it very, very easy to talk to a RESTful API. Um, there's an HTTP module that is pathetically easy to call a RESTful API. We'll talk about routing. Um, Angular is a single page application, meaning that there's one page and everything inside it changes based on JavaScript and whatnot. And um, um, uh, so, what we need to be able to do is uh, route things to different places so that they, you have a URL for a given page um, or the notion of a page. There's only one page, but each route can represent a different representation on the screen. And finally, we'll use material design. Um, we'll talk a little bit about angular material design. How many have heard that phrase? It's a Android based on material, Android's UI is based on material design. And so Google. Uh, provides an, an angular material design that you can use inside your uh, apps and we'll build something on that. A um, couple things I didn't mention here, we'll also talk about a little about how to validate and uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, your, your inputs, things like that, that's important. For instance, we'll look at how to validate a phone number, make sure that people can only type numbers and that they must type them in the form of a phone number, all that good stuff. Or, you assist them in typing it in a form of a phone number, all that different kind of stuff. Any questions so far about Angular? Okay, very good. So let's talk a little bit about TypeScript. Um, TypeScript is JavaScript with classes and types added into it. Um, it is a superset of JavaScript almost perfectly but not quite perfectly there's a few little things that the typescript compiler doesn't like about javascript but they're very minor and they're very high end We're referring to ecmascript 6 or 7 be that as it may all i'll make the blanket statement it's not entirely accurate but all javascript is um valid typescript so if you want to pay me a whole bunch of money, I'll come out to your site and I will convert all your JavaScript to TypeScript. <laughs> and you guys will be TypeScript uh, developers by the uh, end of the 10 minutes I'm there. Because all you have to do is change the extension to TS and now all of a sudden you're a TypeScript developer. And, and, and that sounds kind of funny, but actually that's probably the right thing to do if you want to start using TypeScript, is to simply um, do that very thing, 
start using the TypeScript environment and um, and uh, slowly but surely add, start adding type and class information to your JavaScript. So the way that a normal shop development organization would migrate would be to change the literally change the extensions and then start adding types and annotations into your code. Use TypeScript whenever you write new code. And uh, eventually, your code will be TypeScript. So as I said, all JavaScript is TypeScript. TypeScript is transpiled into JavaScript. And I find transpiled doesn't come out of my mouth very well, so I'll probably say compiles to JavaScript. And I looked this up, and the notion of a distinction, the notion of the distinction between transpiling and compiling is that transpiling moves from one level of abstraction to the same level of abstraction. Whereas compiling takes you from one level of abstraction down to a lower level of abstraction. So for instance, the C sharp compiler compiles to IL code, which is a lower level of abstraction than the actual C sharp code itself. Whereas a TypeScript compiler transpiles to JavaScript, which is at the same level of abstraction. So in the end, you end up with JavaScript, and that JavaScript can run in the browser. JavaScript, of course, is the most popular language in the world. Every single computer that I can conceive of today, with the possible exception of some DOS holdouts, probably has a JavaScript uh, interpreter built into its browser. Um, in this day and age, you'd have to be pretty much of a Luddite to turn off JavaScript, which you can do, um, as most sites these days require JavaScript. So anyway, do that as a name. It's an open source project run by Anders Heilsberg and Microsoft. Anybody heard of Anders Heilsberg? Most famous for inventing Delphi. Thank you. Yes. And uh, he also invented a couple of languages like C Sharp and the .NET Framework and other stuff. Most famous for Delphi, though, of course. You laugh, but I'm sticking with that story. <laughs> um, you're not going to be surprised to know that it's hosted on GitHub. If you go to GitHub right now and uh, look up the, trans the TypeScript project, and search for Anders' name, you will see that Anders Heilsberg probably comments and or approves pull requests on a daily basis. He's out there. His, you can check his check. You can check his um, work on there. You can see his name in the comments. You can see his name in the check-ins. You can see his name discussing issues in the. I find that very astonishing. I find the whole Microsoft open source thing astonishing, but that's a whole other story. I'm an old school guy who remembers back when you know it was very controversial that Microsoft charged uh, every computer company for a Windows copy, no matter what operating system they put on the computer. Anybody besides me remember that? Anybody being all bent out of shape about that? Anybody else remember when they were all bent out of shape that they were giving away uh, Internet Explorer for free? Remember that everybody was all bent out of shape about that? And we, you know, laugh now. You know why we laugh? Because it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so JavaScript has a couple of purposes, uh, some of the reasons that it was created. One of them is that JavaScript is very unstructured. Um, it doesn't have really any notion of any type of module or unit or any type of container for code that can use, be used to separate concerns. And so the bigger the projects that, got, that JavaScript became, the more difficult it became to organize them and manage them. So one of the purposes of TypeScript is to provide that manageability and maintainability into, um, into the JavaScript world. In addition, the strong typing of TypeScript allows um, tooling and ease of development. So as you'll see with a Visual Studio Code, if you haven't already done it, 
you get things like full capable IntelliSense and uh, all different kinds of, of uh, normal IDE type things that you get with JavaScript with TypeScript that you don't get with JavaScript. So um, that's another reason that TypeScript is very powerful. It's more it it's more productive. A third thing that uh, that uh, is somewhat controversial in the world of programming languages is the notion that TypeScript is strongly typed as opposed to JavaScript, which is loosely typed or not typed at all, in fact. In JavaScript, you can set a variable to be a string, you can set a variable to be an object, you can set a variable to be a number, the same variable, I should say. And uh, it, all, it all seems to work out somehow, but it does lend itself to a certain type of error uh, that, you know, like mistyped names, that kind of thing, typos, that aren't detected until runtime. The idea behind a strongly typed language is, in theory, it catches those errors at compile time or even design time while you're typing because the tool will put a little red squiggly under some name it doesn't recognize if you mistype something. Um, so, Here's some important TypeScript constructs. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through TypeScript. Uh, how many people are familiar with it at least? Well, a few of you. Um, if you're not familiar with it, how many people are familiar with C Sharp? How many C Sharp developers do you have in here? Okay, you're going to look at it and you're going to go, boy, that looks a lot like C Sharp, which is no coincidence because Anders Heilberg, famous, world famous inventor of Delphi, also invented C Sharp. Uh, he also was involved in the development of C Sharp. And so his involvement in the development of TypeScript, you can see that reflected in uh, the, in the terms. So first thing we'll look at, well, not we're going to look at, but just some things to be aware of, is TypeScript has the notion of modules, which is very important for sequestering code, ensuring that your code is properly separated, the concerns are separated. And of course, classes enable you to do encapsulation, um, inheritance and polymorphism. One of the important uh, constructs that are part of TypeScript is uh, that Angular takes advantage of is the notion of decorators. And um, uh, the decorators are annotations in some of the languages. Sometimes they're called attributes in other languages. It depends on what they are. But that's the metadata that you can attach to a class that tells the class how to behave. And TypeScript also provides interfaces, which are an important uh, tool for ensuring your code is properly decoupled and that you uh, code against interfaces and not against implementations, as the uh, saying goes. So here's the notion of a module. <coughs> Excuse me, pardon me. <coughs> so modules can hold code and expose only that code that they want to to the outside world. So code that's in a module must be explicitly imported if you want to use code from another module. And if you want your code to be visible outside the module, you must explicitly export it. So any TypeScript file is going to have a top level import or export section that will define what can be imported. Import is loosely similar to the notion of using in C Sharp. You know, if you're using a module, or using a namespace. So modules are loosely similar to namespaces, which are very valuable for ensuring that your code is properly sequestered off from other code. So here's a class. This is an Angular class here. You can see the keyword class that's been exported. This is one of the classes we'll look at a little later. It's a telephone input component. It implements an interface, as you can see. Um, it's got a constructor, does a little constructor injection, in fact, there. Um, and uh, it's got methods assigned to it. So that, that, to me, is very readable, if you're, especially if you're a C-sharp guy, that C-sharp person. That's a very readable chunk of code. That's what a TypeScript class looks like. And in fact, that's what a JavaScript class looks like with, as of JavaScript 6, ECMAScript 6, I think, is when they added objects. Is that right? That reminds me of one of the things that uh, I wanted to talk about with TypeScript. I'll talk about it now because 
I forgot to mention it earlier. TypeScript very closely tracks the uh, uh, ECMAScript standard. So when ECMAScript adds classes, uh, TypeScript classes are very, very similar, if not identical, to ECMAScript classes. The beauty of TypeScript, though, is that TypeScript can be transpiled. You can, I'm sorry, you can target the transpilation of, of TypeScript to any version of ECMAScript. You can actually have TypeScript compiled all the way down to ECMAScript 3, which is sort of like the original version out there. So because many browsers don't handle the newest and latest versions of ECMAScript or JavaScript, they're one and the same, by the way. Um, TypeScript's, one of TypeScript's advantages is you can write with all the cool language constructs that uh, <clears throat> TypeScript provides, but you can target ES5, for instance. That's the normal thing to do. ES5 seems to be sort of the most broadly accepted version of JavaScript. Anyway, <clears throat> so, so you have classes. Here's a decorator. This is a decorator here. Where uh, I can't point with this mouse. Can, I, can you see the mouse? I don't know how am I supposed to work? Okay. This is a decorator uh, up there. And it's a component decorator, and it says, hey, this class, this telephone input component, is a class. And it is a component. I'm sorry, it declares that as a component. And it gives a bunch of information that the component needs, like what the selector is, how you're going to display that inside of your uh, HTML templates. Um, the template URL is a reference to a template file, that kind of thing. It gives you all that good information about um, the component, about the class, and how the component can be used. So those are decorators, metadata for a class. And this is interfaces. They work exactly the same as they do in, um, uh, uh, how do we call it, um, C Sharp. You declare an interface, a uh, set of functionality, a contract that must be met. You then implement that interface with a class. And uh, it, it, all good, right? Any questions so far? By the way, don't hesitate to stop me, ask a question. Uh, if you have a question, you good so far? Okay. Excellent. All right. I think it's time to get down to business. Everybody got their computers up, ready to go? Everybody got a command prompt. Bring up a command prompt because we're going to do a bunch of work at the command prompt. Anybody besides me find it ironic that we're all going back and you know, all the cool kids are doing command prompt work, right? Anybody out here use DOS? Come on. Okay. Age yourself a little bit. How many people in the room are wondering, what the heck is DOS? Anyone? No one? Really? Ryan, do you know what DOS is? All right. Okay. Good. Maybe I'm... That's good. I'm glad to hear it. I'm going to pick on Ryan. He works at Gateway. Um, so <clears throat> one of the tools we're going to use today, so uh, why don't you type this command, npm install dash g json dash server. This will install a tool called json server, which will enable you to very easily fake a uh, REST API with less in less than 30 seconds with zero coding. It's really cool. It's basically a tool that allows you to build a front-end application with an API based upon JSON for prototyping, mocking, and in our, in our, uh, for our purposes today, we're going to use it as our main server, as it will, our server API. Anybody have any trouble with that? Sir? Yeah. Doesn't recognize your node. If you type, if you, if you type npm dash v, it doesn't know what. It doesn't give you anything. Yeah. That. Sorry. 
It's working? You're good? Okay, very good. Anybody else? Yes, Meg. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we don't have two hours, so that's an important safety tip. Yeah. Anybody else in a, on a Mac in here? Oh, boy. Okay. Just kidding. Macs are cool. Anybody else need me to hold up and wait here a few minutes before we press on to the next install? Okay. Next up is TypeScript. Here's how you can install TypeScript. NPM install dash G TypeScript. Anybody besides me wonder how in the world we got along without Node Package Manager? I mean, TypeScript, boom, installed. You're there, you're done. This is the graphic from the uh, TypeScript lang.org homepage, by the way. <clears throat> How's TypeScript going? You type T, you'll know TypeScript, you'll know JSON server is installed correctly if you type JSON dash server, enter, and it doesn't say what the heck are you talking about. You know TypeScript is installed properly, you can type TypeScript-V and it tells you which version you're on. Anybody good with installing TypeScript? To get the most recent version of TypeScript. Okay, moving along. This is the big moment, folks, the one you've all been waiting for. Here's how you install Angular. Very challenging and difficult. However, this one will take a little longer because when you install Angular, you're, I, well, is it now at this stage or is it the next stage? No, don't worry about it. It shouldn't take too long. Anybody having any problems, let me know. Ray, what's the matter? TSC. I'm sorry. TSC dash B. My, my apologies, I misspoke. TSC-V should give you a version number. There you go. What version number is it, by the way? Sorry? 3.4.3. .3. Perfect. TypeScript is, they release TypeScript every 38 hours or so, a new version comes out. 3.4 was just released two weeks ago. We move along. TypeScript. Everybody's got TypeScript. If you want to know that TypeScript got installed, um, or Angular got installed, uh, we don't have any CLR install, CLI installed. Yet. Here we'll we'll figure that out here in a sec. Next up is to install the Angular command line interface. <coughs> Nobody wants to hear me coughing over the microphone. So the uh, CLI has been a big focus of the Angular team, um, because mainly because it's a very powerful way to easily and quickly bootstrap new components, new services, new applications, all that kind of stuff. And we'll do that here in a minute. Okay, how many people are not using VS Code? Just a few of you. Okay. By the way, uh, you can tell that the Angular CLI installed correctly by typing ng dash dash version. And you should get 
seven point something. What version did you guys get? 7.3? 7.3.8? That sounds about right. Yes. Uh, NG dash dash version. I should have put that up on the slides. I'm sorry. Everybody good so far? No, just NG. It should, NG is the uh, command line interface, command line command for Angular. Base dash dash version. Yeah. Next time around, I'll put those commands up on the slides. I'm sorry, I should have done that. I don't see anybody shaking their head or raising a fist in anger. Yes. Sorry? You don't see the version? What happened? What do you see? Dash dash version. Yeah. But it, it's the fact that it's showing the available commands also tells you that it's there. So that's good. So you should be all, everybody should be good. So here's where the code comes in. Um, Uh, the uh, Angular extensions for VS Code, this article actually is a little outdated. What I recommend you do, oh geez, I suddenly realized I'm not using the correct slides. How embarrassing is that? I updated this. I, I was wondering what was going on. Okay, hang on. No wonder I was getting a little confused and forgetting things. My apologies. Give me just a moment. Should it? Here we go. Okay. Oh! In the introduction part, I was supposed to show you, watch this. I was supposed to show you this cool new website I started. So let me do a little advertising for like a minute. I started this website called ArrayOfDevelopers.com. And it's a, a, a place where you can go as a developer and you can fill out this little Google form I have and you can share your wisdom with all the developers in the world. So you can subscribe to see what other people have to say. I ask you 10 questions about development and you get to share your wisdom. And uh, I just wanted to plug that website because, you know, everybody likes their website to be popular and I want my website to be popular. Okay, so I you get to see all my jokes again. Um, let's see. We didn't talk about that. We missed that slide. Hey, TypeScript. We're getting there. There we go. Angular install CLI. Here we go. Angular extensions for VS Code. If you are using VS Code, go to the little square inside a square thing on the left, where which is your extensions. Click on that. Search for Angular Essentials. And install that. Just press the install button there. Angular Essentials is a package of extensions in a single extension by a guy named John Papa, who's a well-known Angular front-end developer. And it provides you with basically all the goodies inside of Visual Studio Code that uh, you need to do Angular development. Um, just as a side note, anybody know what language Visual Studio Code is written in? It is written in TypeScript and turned into a Windows, Linux, and Mac application using Electron. 
So it is also an open source project. Um, and you can go and download it, contribute to it, change it, do whatever you want to it. It's all written in TypeScript. You do not have to install this, but it is very, very cool if you do install this when you develop Angular applications as you will get all things and all kinds of cool things like IntelliSense and uh, error markings and all that good stuff that you expect from your IDE when you're developing in a type language. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no, this is in VS Code. Let me see if I can get... How do I do this? Yeah, let's see. You go to this little guy right here, and you search for the words Angular Essential. And you should see this thing right here. It's got 391,000 downloads. I've already installed it, but you click the Install button. And it'll just install. Thank you, Chris. I that wasn't clear. I apologize. I believe Visual Studio comes with all of that stuff built in. Visual Studio is very tight. Well, at least 2017 and 2019 are very TypeScript friendly. Yeah. Anybody have any tr trouble with that? That, that? I'm sorry? Everybody get that? Okay. It is quite a bit of stuff. It's about six or seven different extensions packaged together as one extension. <clears throat> Are they having any troubles? Should I press on? Sir. With your, oh, with Git? I don't know why Git would have anything to do with, hmm. What, ver what errors are you get? This is when you try to install the Angular CLI. Okay. Anything I can do? Everybody reasonably good, and we're in a reasonably good spot as a group here. Should be about 57 of us in here, so we're all in this together. Did that help? No? Okay, anybody have any problems with the Angular extension uh, for VS Code? Still installing? Wow. I don't remember it taking that long. I installed mine quite a while ago. I don't remember taking that one. Let me know when we're ready to move on. I'm going to go like this when we're ready. Okay. 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 Okay.
Good. You're moving along, done. So I press on to the next slide. Okay. Now we're going to go to Git, get some code off of GitHub, which is the code that we're going to use to build our to do application later today or whenever we get to it. Later today. So this command at the command line will install the code into the directory which command line you're in. So my recommendation would be to go to some directory called, you know, my directory or Angular uh, class or whatever, and then input this command at that directory. Because it will create a directory called Philly CC to do app and put all the code beneath that. There's your first git command of the day. I wasn't sure if you could create a bit.ly link that would git would clone off of a bit.ly link, so I didn't do that. Didn't want to mess around, but it's not too tough to type. GitHub.com forward slash Nick Hodges forward slash Philly CC to do app dot git. If you're really typing impaired, you can go to GitHub, type Nick Hot, look, search for Philly CC to do app, go to the page here, you know, go to the page here and copy the code there, which is the same thing. <clears throat> and you all should be able to download that into the directory that your command prompt, they'll create a directory below the directory that your command prompt is at. <coughs> Anybody having problems with that? It's all good? Moving along here. This raid will be done at noon. No, just kidding. How's that going? Anybody stuck in any way? that I can help while we wait. Sir. Uh, that means you need to install Git, I would, I would assume. Yeah, that was one of the prerequisites for the class, unfortunately. I don't see anybody weeping in anguish out there. I may see a few of you weeping with joy at the notion of doing this class, but nobody weeping in anguish, apparently. So far, so good. Are we ready to get started? Because this is the last thing we got to do at this point. Basically, no slides from here on out. Anybody excited about that? Yes. No slides. So at this point on your machine, you should have JSON server installed. Angular and the Angular CLI installed. You should have TypeScript installed, and you should have the uh, code that we're going to use in our demo demonstration for the most of the rest of the day uh, on your machine. Is there anyone here for whom that is not yet true that wants to own up to it? <laughs> 
working on Git. Sorry? No, no problem. Okay. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at a basic Angular application, sort of the anatomy of an Angular application. Everybody good? Need some power? Oh, okay. I have an extension cord, or at least a, a, a very, very short extension cord, if that helps. You good? Okay, so now we're done with slides. For the, I won't even bring up the slides for the day until the very, very, very end. Let me see. I'm confused. There we go. Okay, I think at this point, I am going to want to duplicate my screen. Okay, anybody got any problems? I'm going to try and keep everybody up to speed as best I can here. Um, power seems to be an issue for some people, totally understand that. Um, we will take a break in half an hour, is that okay? 10 o'clock? Take a 10 minute break and then come back and then leave lunch at 11.30? How's that sound? That was good to me. Okay, so what I would like you to do now is, assuming everybody's all up to speed, why don't we open up a command shell? I am going to make my font a little bigger so you can read what I'm doing a little more easily. Is that big enough? Can you read that in the back? Or do I need to make it bigger? Bigger? I certainly can. How about 36? How about that? Is that all right? Does that work out okay? I don't hear anybody screaming. No. No tears of anguish? Okay, good. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a or create a very basic or the most basic Angular application that you can create, it's not the most basic, but it's the standard command line brand new application. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go ng, which is the Angular um, command line command. We're going to go new, and we're going to go Billy CC demo. That's all I'm going to do. So. What this is going to do is it's going to create a new application in a in the directory Philly CC demo underneath whatever directory you're on right now. And it's going to provision or scaffold, I guess is the term of art in the programming world, a new Angular application for you. You hit enter. And it's going to ask you some questions. Would you like to add Angular routing? Let's go yes. And then it asks you what type of style sheet format would you want to use? You can use SAS, LAS, Stylus, any of the famous well-known style sheets. I'm going to stick with just plain old boring CSS because we're not going to really get into styling uh, too much in this talk. And at this point it should create a bunch of files for you. Then it should go out to the internet and download a huge directory called node modules and it's downloading all the node stuff that uh, you may or may not want. Yes? 
Sorry? How do you update it? Maybe say npm update. I don't know. Ask npm, npm. That I confess I don't know. Update? Anybody know how to update? The question was, I'm sorry. The question was, how do you update npm at the command prompt? <clears throat> Anybody get this one, Ray? Did you type ng new? Oh, go to a new directory. Yeah. You can choose whatever you want, but CSS is the default, and that's. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk about CSS or styling your apps much today at all. Get it, Ray? Are you in a directory where it's already finding a app? Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah. I went to my junk directory. I have a junk directory that I put on every computer. Just hold stuff like this. What's that? I can't get your email address. Oh, Git? Hmm. I have no idea what that is. Can you Google that? Yeah. That seems very strange. I'm sorry. That's something to get that doesn't seem to like you. See, I, I, my recommendation would be to Google and see what the problem there is. Anybody else having problems? Yeah, what's up? Oh, an environment variable. Are you getting the don't recognize Git error? Anybody else getting that? That's correct. You must have Git installed to do what we're doing today. Sir. Ah, can you try npm update? And I didn't like that. Yeah, try that. The npm install. Update. Not update. Install. Space npm. At time. Latest. That should do it. Anybody else? This is a critical moment in the class, folks. We're actually going to do Angular, so we make sure everybody's good. Anybody having a problem? We get. We definitely want Git installed. So. I think you could go to Google or Bing. I use Bing because I like the free, uh, free money. I do use Bing. Chris, you'll be proud of me. I use Bing. You can Google that with Bing. <laughs> Good so far? That's what probably you had to do, set your email somewhere. You all good, Ryan? I know you are. I don't have to worry about Ryan. So, If you, if this all succeeded, you should have a, 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 a directory. I just did a dir here. You should have a directory with the name that you used on the new command. Did that work? Is that working, Ray? 
Okay, good. So now I'm going to go CD Philly CC demo. I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna go dir, and I should you should see something that looks like that. One of the things it does is it automatically sets your application up for Git, so you'll notice that there's a, well, it doesn't show it, but there's git ignore file that's created that default, and it has a hidden git file directory. Sir, it was created as part of the new command using the name that you typed right directly after new. Whatever you type, you ng new, Directory name is how it works. Yeah. Everybody good? Don't be shy. I don't bite. Happy to help in any way I can, sir. I'm sorry? I can't hear you. Forgive me. Canvas all what? I'm sorry. Angular. Why not? What does it say? You're connected to the Microsoft network? You don't have a VPN running or anything like that? VPN might be fighting you on NPM. So maybe disconnect the VPN, I don't know. Does that help? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. You can't? Oh. What's your long afternoon? I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Yes. Still the same? No way. Try closing the. Why not? Close down and open up the uh, fan pump again. Okay, the next thing that you can do that's kind of fun is we can go code space dot and that will open up Microsoft Visual Studio code in the directory that you type the dot for and since we were in the directory of our application it will open that folder up in Visual Studio code and just code space dot code space period So this should open up code so that we can, you have the folder over here, and if you uh, double click on the readme, it'll show you the readme for this basic project. Now, one of the features of Visual Studio Code is uh, it has a built-in uh, terminal, so if you go control tilde or control tick, yes. Oh, yes, I certainly can. Um, control, oops, no control. That's a, because that's a bit much. Let's see, how's that? You're welcome. Good, thank you. Good suggestion. Excellent suggestion. So. Um, I went control tilde and that brought up this little window down here and this is a terminal so if I uh, hit enter a couple times it'll bring up a, 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 a little terminal window in my case it's PowerShell but I think you can select something else and then I'm going to type ng serve and then I am already running something I'm already running a docker container so I'm going to go dash that you don't have to do this part you don't have to do the port part But then you, what you do want to do is dash dash open. So basically you want to type ng serve dash dash open. 
hit enter and then you'll you should see the application compile and you should see your browser pop up and you should see this ng space serve ng serve okay if you are seeing this you are up to the correct point if you're not seeing this i'm happy to help answer questions just like that so anyone who needs uh oh i better turn off turn off my wife that's not good Who sees this? The majority? Who does not see this? Yet. You're having trouble and I, I can't help you with the VPN, unfortunately. That's frustrating. Who else doesn't see this but and needs help or thinks they can't figure it out? Control tilde or control tick. Got it? NG space serve space dash dash open. Anybody else? I don't want anybody to get frustrated here. I'm doing everything I can to keep the frustration count down. How are we doing? Are we doing all right? Thumbs up. All right. Sorry? Reboot solve a multitude of problems. Okay, so that's cool. You can minimize the browser. And now we're going to look at what's going on over here and what's going on in here. So uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, let's see. Let's start actually at the bottom uh, with these JSON files. Um, Everybody know what a anybody not know what a linter is in the JavaScript TypeScript world? A linter is a tool that uh, specifies specific specifies rules for code formatting and code formation, and it scans over the the code and it gives you error indications where you are not following the rules that the linter has set. So, for instance, the tslint JSON file over here has a bunch of rules in it. It's a pretty, fairly big file. It has no switch case fall through, no var requires. Um, it has a bunch of different things for TypeScript's linter. So that's what that file does. It determines the rules that the TypeScript linter will use when... Um, scanning your code and looking at the thing. So for instance, if I go to main.ts and I type the word CTH, it should in a minute here figure out what the heck, I don't understand that, and put a little red line underneath CTCH because it doesn't know what that is. That's the linter at work telling you um, I don't know what that is. Also, you can hover over it and it'll give you some information about the. Uh, does everybody see that too if they hover over? Well, you don't have to worry about that too soon. So that's the, the linter. And those are on, those are on a tr per directory basis, generally speaking. The tsconfig.json file is the file that determines all the configuration settings 
for the TS, the TypeScript compiler. So, uh, for instance, if you want the TypeScript compiler to run, compile on save, you can set that to true. You can type true in there, and every time you save, the TypeScript compiler will run. Um, you got compiler options. Um, here's a here's one that's quite interesting. You say target ES5 is the target version of TypeScript, and uh, you can put in ES5, ES3, ES6, whatever version of ES you want um, in there. ES5 is the default because that's sort of the baseline version, I think I mentioned this before, of JavaScript that 99.9% .9 of the browsers out there can handle. Some of the newer versions of JavaScript are not built into all the browsers that are out there. So that's one of the strengths of TypeScript. It can take your cool modern typed classes, types based code and turn it into JavaScript of a certain level. If I if I were to change this to ES 2017, I would get oops. 2017, not that far in the future. 2017, I would get a very different type of output from the compiler than I do if I have ES5. Everybody good so far? This one? Okay. That help? Make it much bigger. I won't be able to. Yeah. Is that good? Okay. So that's what this TS config file is. Um, users of GitHub should be f familiar with the notion of a README file. This Angular JSON file has in it. A bunch of information about the Angular project, for instance, the name of the project, um, the source root, uh, which is this source directory here. Um, it has different op build options that you can, configuration options. It defines the Angular type stuff that's in there. Git ignore is a Git file. Editor config is actually um, a standard file. I think if you go to editorconfig.org, or just type editor config into Google, it'll take you there. It's a standard, not uh, editor agnostic way of defining editor configuration files. Have anybody heard of this thing? It's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, a few of you. Um, you like, yeah, editorconfig.org up here. You can see that. Um, Angular doc JSON, we won't worry about. So, um, Let's open up the source directory, and inside the source directory is some interesting files. <clears throat> the most the most basic of the files inside the directory is the index.html file, and that is the most that is the single page application. That is the single page that your application uses. If you go back to our browser and you hit, I'm going to hit Control U to do view source, that's the source of the page for our application. That's it. Despite the fact that the application looks like this, there's, a, there's writing and there's links and there's a graphic and all that stuff, this is the source of the page. And you'll notice it's a little small here. I need to see if I can. A little small. It's really small. You'll notice that it's just got a bunch of references to TypeScript. So that's to JavaScript. So these files here are the runtime.js, polyfill.js, main.js, styles.js. That's the output of the TypeScript compiler for the uh, application, for the Angular application. And we'll see that in a minute. 
Now, if you actually want to see what the real HTML is, you can come over here and uh, look at that, and you can start opening it up, and it'll it'll actually show you the actual content of the uh, of the uh, source. Um, so the uh, index.html file is actually the only HTML file that your application uses. It just embeds all the uh, JavaScript in there and then on the client inside the browser the JavaScript runs and does everything you want it to do. Does that make sense? Conceptually that's a little hard for people to understand at first. But Angular builds single page applications and this index.html is the single page. So there's some test, there's some uh, TypeScript files here that are important. This one is the uh, uh, main.ts and this is the file that uh, Angular looks for to as the main unit of the application. Um, it imports some things from the Angular core library it inputs, imports the app module, which we'll look at in a minute, from the app slash app module unit or file. It uh, enables production mode if the environment production variable is enabled. And here's where the app is actually run. It says platform browser dynamic bootstrap module app module. If there's an error, I'll put the error to the console. So bootstrap module is the module defined by Angular as the base module that is going to be the one upon which everything will expand, if that makes sense. And we'll kind of see that here in a minute. So you'll notice the index HTML has something rather interesting in it. It has this thing called app root. If you go to the index.html, that is the basis for all of what is displayed app dash root open core you know op open tag close tag or dash tag okay so remember that app dash root so if we go back to our root directory here there's a couple of other files here's a main styles you can put any styling you want in here for the main application those styles inside the root style.css file will be um, uh, uh, applied globally we'll see here in a minute that you can apply styles at a component level um, let's see in this root directory there's not a whole lot more uh, the assets directory generally is a directory where you put things like bitmap the bitmap JPEGs and uh, icons and uh, graphics and other types of things. Anything that you want to use uh, by your application. You open up source and then open up app. This is where things start getting interesting. You go to the app.module.ts file. Uh, you'll notice that it has a class called app module it's just a simple class but on top of it is a directory or I'm sorry a directive not a directive a annotation or a decorator depending upon how you think of those things called ng module and what that ng module does is it says this class that I'm attached to the app module is the main module for my application and it has a couple of interesting things it imports the browser module and the app routing module from um, our other other files in the in the unit, which we'll look at in a minute. And then it says bootstrap app component. So the bootstrap reference is the component that is going to be placed into the app dash root tag that we look at in a minute. So 
you kind of hope, hopefully you're kind of building up a little hierarchy in your head. We'll go over it again, don't worry. So the app component is found in app component.ts. And you'll notice a few things about that. It has a component tag. Okay? And it has a thing called a selector. Now the selector here, you'll notice, is app-root. And that should be familiar to you. From index.html, there's the app-root. So this component, yes, Mike. Sure. That at component is a decorator. It is metadata for the class. It's a language feature of TypeScript that basically says, hey, I'm attaching this piece of information to your class as metadata for the class. So the compiler then goes in and finds that information and uses it to build out the JavaScript for the application when we compile our Angular application. Does that make sense? The at symbol indicates that it's a decorator. So it says I'm a component decorator. And component decorator takes certain parameters. And one of them is the selector. So this app root here is the reference to this app root here. Now, the next item on the component is the template.url. And that's the template URL attribute on or uh, 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 piece of information on the uh, component attribute. I'll call it a decorator. It's, it's, it's an attribute on a decorator. Is a reference to an HTML file. Now you could, let's see, so the HTML file is this. And if you look at this, this is actually what you see. Welcome to, and we'll talk about this here in a minute, the title. Um, and then here's the links. Over here is the links to the CLI documentation, Angular blog, and all that stuff. Okay? So this is the actual HTML that gets displayed. So this app module says, this is the app module is sort of the heart of the application here in terms of the development of the application. It references the app component file, which has a URL like so, that references the HTML file. So this HTML file is then taken and placed into this location called the app root. The reason that, that happens is because the component has the app root selector. So far so good? Stop me if you have questions. Feel free to ask any questions at all. Okay? This, there's a difference between app module and app component. So the app module, this title here is actually the same name that was in main.ts as the bootstrap module. So I'll trace through it again because I, it is a little, there is a hierarchy here and uh, it's going to get even more complex <laughs> uh, here in a minute. So what Angular does is Angular says, where's your main.ts file? Okay, I found it. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to import this stuff. You don't have to worry about this. this we'll, we'll talk about that later, later on in the day. But it comes along and it says, okay, here's my platform browser dynamic call. I'm looking for that. I find it. And there's a bootstrap method that takes a module as its parameter. I'm gonna. I'm the Angular runtime. I'm the Angular compiler. I'm gonna find that app module, which is in here. It is. Here's the reference to it. App module is in the app slash app module app dot module file. I'm gonna go there, and I'm gonna look 
for a module, that module. I found it. Hey, there it is. Now, on that module is the ng module decorator. So that class is decorated with a bunch of information. And one of those pieces of information, for now, what we need to worry about is the bootstrap component. So I need my bootstrap component. I need a component to display inside my app module. So I'm going to go and find app component. Well, app component happens to be in the dot slash app component unit. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to find, hey, here's the, it's exported so I can see it. There's the app component class. It has a property called title or a, a variable called title called Philly Code Camp Demo, like so. And it's got some information on it, namely a selector named app root. So for this, the module finds the component. The component finds that selector. The selector is in index.html, and it says where this app root selector is, this tag, I am going to place my code. The component says I'm going to place my code. So the component then says, where's my code? Well, it's in the template URL, which is in this file. And this file is the one you're seeing here. Here's the three links. This is the one you're seeing in here. You know, here's a link to Tour of Heroes. That's the first link there, Tour of Heroes, right? Doc, CLI documentation, the link to the blog. Those are all right here. So then it says, okay, I'm going to stick that in there. And then I'm going to display index.html with this code replaced by the app root. That's what all that JavaScript is doing. Does that make sense? Following me so far? Okay. It is a bit convoluted. I recognize that. But it's all, in my mind, very beautifully laid out. Right. So from this point forward, all we need to worry about is enhancing the capability of this component right here, this app component, which will be displayed in the app root. Okay? Yes. Great. Theoretically, you could put, well, actually, that's a good question. A lot of times, yeah, Meg, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's, that's actually not the case. I'll show you what happens. Um, it, it's hard to see because it, it, this thing, it's app loads so quickly. But you can go to index.html and you can say, you can put, it's common to see this, you'll put, Loading. How much help here for you? Um, you can say, uh, you know, loading the application. Dash 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 like so. Okay. And then that'll be displayed <coughs> while the application's loading. This application loads so quickly. I don't know if you'll see it, but. Yeah, it doesn't really give you the opportunity. Um, I would say that we would want to go to angular.io and go to docs. And it's pretty well explained here in the, in the uh, documentation. Uh, the Getting Started document talks a lot about this very stuff that we're covering here. Shows you the descriptions. Then they have a tutorial that describes a bunch of it called the Hero app, Tour of Heroes application. The documentation is pretty good. By the way, the documentation is built in Angular. And it's an open source project. 
And if you want to get involved with the Angular Open Source Project, one of the good ways to do it is by helping fix typos, uh, improve the grammar of, and add enhanced documentation. That's a good way to get build up a little street cred with the Angular team by doing the documentation. It's a little side tip and nip there. Does that help? So let's see if I if we can see if that loading appears. There it is. Did you see it? Right? So that's that's what you put in the middle there. That's what you put. In theory, you I, I don't know if I've ever seen it, but in theory you could put say like, you know, my attribute equals blah like that here on that tag. Although I've never seen that because generally speaking that's about as complex as that application would get. Meg. Yes. It will be that entire tag will be replaced by whatever is the HTML of your app module. Anybody got any other questions? Sir. Yes, that's probably exactly what you would do. Yeah. Any question back there? Sorry? Uh-huh. Yes. Those, that's a good question. Where do those uh, references in, I'll uh, trying to repeat for the folks online or for the video. Where, do, so you're specifically asking, you got app module here. Where, where do these two come from? If you scroll up, you'll see you have a directory called node modules. Beware when you open that, there's 500 directories in there. Well, not even 500, but quite a few. And there's a directory called at Angular. And underneath that, there's a directory called platform browser. And under that is a bunch of directories. And the browser module is in there somewhere. Let's see. Browser module is in there somewhere. I think. There it is, browser, browser data adapt. I think I can. It's in there somewhere, I promise. It's in one of those directories. So if you recall, when we installed the application, or, um, it took a while to create uh, and download all this. The node, this is all Node, uh, the Node.js stuff. And it pulls all that of it into your directory. If you go to File Explorer, you'll notice that uh, there's quite a bit. Let's see. This directory is, is pretty big. And there's quite, I mean, it, it's really big. And that is Node. And they put all that in there because they don't know um, what part of Node you're going to end up using. So they have it there. However, uh, it's hidden from Git and uh, it's tr it's uh, all of that. Uh, only that which you're using is uh, 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 included in your application. It's called tr in, uh, I used to call it uh, smart linking, but it's called tree shaking. I, mean, I don't know if that's just an Angular term or if that's a term of art for a broader. Thing. It's called tree shaking. They shake all the leaves off the thing that you don't need, just leaving the leaves that you do. Need. Does that answer your question? Yes. No. That's part of the Angular library. There's a whole mess of code in there that the Angular developers at Google wrote that are is the base library. I mean, you can go in there and plug around and explore it and learn it if you want. It's sort of like studying the code to the .NET framework. It would be the equivalent of the code for the .NET framework. Any other questions? Otherwise, we'll take a break. I don't want to... Yes, app dash is a naming convention. Um, 
that's the default naming convention that you can certainly use any other naming convention that you want. There's, it's not required. Like I might use Nick Dash or something like that. Okay, thank you. Ten minutes, please. We'll be back at 1020. <laughs>